Welcome to The Transition Years, a series of podcast episodes that seeks to deepen understanding of topics and issues that impact students' mathematics experience as they complete their transition years of schooling, which are the last two years of high school and the first two years of post-secondary education. The goal of the Launch Years Initiative, which is way more than just a few podcast episodes, is to increase awareness around the importance of these years so that stakeholders are equipped to act as local change agents to improve the mathematics experiences and outcomes for all students. The Transition Years is brought to you by the Launch Years Mathematics Organization's Leadership Network, which is a part of the Launch Years Initiative at the University of Texas at Austin, Charles A. Dana Center, and it's an Amadon Planet production. I am your host, Joel Amadon, Associate Professor of Secondary Education at the University of Mississippi, and I am joined by Dr. John Staley, who is Coordinator of Special Projects in Baltimore County Public Schools. But for the purposes of this recording, John is the Launch Years Mathematics Organization's Leadership Network Facilitator. But after all that, I'm just going to call him a friend. Hello, John. How are you doing? Hey, Joel. I'm doing great, and thanks for having me here with you today. Yeah, this is kind of exciting. We we get a we get a chance to do something that I love doing. It's it's getting a little bit nerdy and talking talking about math, talking about uh, issues related to mathematics, and and I'm just glad to have this conversation with you. Well, see, Joel, you say nerdy, I say cool. I think it's cool to talk about all yeah, these yeah, cool. issues, and let's make math cool, right? That's right. That's right. Um, yep. You know, I, I think what's uh, what's kind of nice is I get to experience my my kids uh, doing mathematics. I have three kids and, and seeing them how, you know, they light up a little bit when I'll ask them like a question. I'll ask them something like that. And so, you know, maybe it is cool to hang out with dad and talk a little bit about mathematics. So I like that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about cool. All right. So, so John, we, we've, we've talked previously uh, on the Amazon Planet podcast about the power of professional organizations. And it's, you know, from the, the introduction of this podcast episode, we we're talking a little bit about the titles that were related to you and, and the power of, and so there's some power behind some organizations here. What are you involved with here? What, what is this? Uh, what is this that we're talking about? Well, what we're really talking about is a project and initiative that came out of the launch year's work at the Dana Center. And what this is, is a leadership network of mathematics organizations who have come together really to focus in on some key conversations and some work around these trends. Last two years of high school, the first two years of post-secondary being school, job training, two-year or four-year uh, education. So um, what we've done is bring together organizations, representatives from each of those, or from about 11 organizations, to really um, do some work to help with um, helping the broader memberships that are represented by these 11 organizations understand the work, understand how they can be change agents, understand how they can push in on their local settings to help support this work with students. And I don't know about you, John, when, you know, we started having these conversations about uh, this initiative, you know, I, I couldn't help but go back to my own experiences, you know, in those years, which was a while ago, <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> um, and thinking about like my, the only thing that, that was kind of in the, like the only thing that I, I was thinking about or that my parents were thinking about was one, get to college and just keep taking math. And like, there was a single path and it led right through calculus. And it's like, and it seems like that we're talking about that it's more complex than that. Well, it, it definitely is more complex than that because um, the pathway through calculus is not the only pathway for exiting high school. Um, you've got multiple pathways that are there that are that provide good, rich, deep learning opportunities for students as they transition through high school. Um, and a lot of that might be based off of, in some cases, their preparation coming into high school. Mm -hmm. The other part of that, when you think about that, is what are some students' goals? By the time they're in 11th and 12th grade, some students already have goals as far as the types of um, educational experiences, job training experiences, career, military experiences that they want to take up when they leave high school. So that you bring that to the thought process also as to how do we help support students so that those last two years, if they're taking math both years, that's the important part there to think about. But those last two years of mathematics um, is, is key and relevant, more relevant to helping them go towards their future goals um, and also providing them with opportunity and access to what they can do on the other side of high school. Yeah, and, you know, it's it seems like, a lot of times there is that that race to calculus and like you said there's it's more than just that but then also too there could be this you know 
almost the notion back when I was in school, like almost the race to be done. Like I'm done with mathematics. And like, we, we all know in hindsight, you're never done with mathematics and right. And like, and thinking about all that, you know, if you're a living, breathing human being, you are, you're engaged in a mathematical world. And I mean, even, you know, I, we were just talking before we were recording about, you know, Bob Moses, he, he equated uh, having uh, this experience with mathematics as being like a, a participation, participating in society. And he called math at, at times a gatekeeper to citizenship. Like there's doors that can close to you in this life because of, you know, a lack of relationship with mathematics. So expanding what it means to continue this relationship and like with mathematics through these transition years seems like, again, a pretty important thing to consider. And, and so think about Bob Moses' work, especially with the algebra project. That was um, stressing the importance of algebra and students having access to algebra um, with the supports and with structures built around them to help them be successful down in middle school. So think about the importance of that work and, and what he carried on and the legacy he left around that work to help us continue to push in on this work, to change the narrative so that more students have better opportunities to be accessing the mathematics um, when they get into high school. And they see the pathway through mathematics as something they should engage in. Not mm -hmm. a, let me just get my credits and I'm done. And, and different graduation requirements might require different levels of credits and everything. But the importance of mathematics, not only in high school, but what will happen when you get on the other side of that graduation. How math will be there as a part of what you do in life anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and it might involve your, your studies, your trainings, and definitely involves your life. So really thinking about how do we um, help, I guess, everyone. So we're not just talking about educators in this case, but we're talking yeah. about um, caregivers, parents and caregivers. We're talking about students because by the time they're 11th, 12th grade, they have a better understanding of, of what's happening to them. Um, but a lot of what happens to them in 11th, 12th grade began when they were in middle school. Well, began when they were pre-K to 12, yeah. um, pre-K to the middle school, but really is impactful of what's happening in their middle school experience as they come across the grades. So, so yeah, <laughs> and this, this is a complete side note, but my son uh, just, he's just started his junior year. So, I mean, he just entered into the uh, transition years, <laughs> actually just, he just got his license today. So that, that's another transition that yeah. we're going through. Yeah, okay. like, uh, God. But, uh, but thinking about like the, you know, importance of this and like thinking about it, he's thinking about schools. He's thinking about what he wants to do uh, post-graduation and, and all the different you know considerations that go into that. And, you know, what, what kind of mathematics is going to help best prepare him going forward? And how does he want to, again, transition into that, those next, uh, the next step in his life at, it, 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 so, and Joel, you, you mentioned earlier about this pathway that leads through calculus. So that's more of an algebra-driven pathway. But let's think about um, opportunities for your son or others that are going through these years to be exposed to a more quantitative pathway, yeah, to yeah. be exposed to the power of statistics and the really understanding of statistics, which is now um, not only statistics, but data science and, and that work that is um, helping students and helping will help adults be quantitative reasoners, really to have a, a stronger grasp of what's happening when data is presented to them um, or when lack of data is presented to them. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, no, and, and, I, uh, and a little bit of my background too, like I had a chance to teach in core plus. So thinking about mathematics, it was not just, you know, your algebra, geometry, a um, little bit of statistics, but then there was discrete mixed in there too. So it was like this you know, like for our students, it, it opened up like, you know, mathematics is more than just these subjects that your, uh, that your, um, your parents were introduced to, but there's so much more out there. And then how do we, you know, expose students to that? That's, that's pretty important as well. Cause like, like you said, these other paths are going to lead or these other, um, experiences could, you know, provide the sort of ex relationship with mathematics. that's going to, again, launch people into that next generation. So um, and, and Joe, you just you mentioned one one thing that I'm like, wow. You mentioned the mathematics of our parents and the mathematics that our parents possibly um in the in order mathematics we you took. I <laughs> yeah, took, yeah, we I took. We're the parents now, yeah. <laughs> my granddaughter might be taken now. And, and the part that we should probably think about and the part that we really need to have some some rich conversations around is the modernization of mathematics and what we really mm. need to do. What's the mathematics that we really need now? 
And, and we have to ask ourselves that question. It's a parallel question to what's the technology. Here we are in two different states talking, interacting. I'm willing to bet you got a cell phone over there beside you. Like, I have a cell phone. I don't yeah. have to walk to my wall and pull the cord. And so the technologies have changed. The access to our technologies have changed. What has changed about our mathematics over the years? And so that's a whole other part of the conversation, yeah. but some somewhat a part of what we're talking about here. That's right. That's right. So, you know, what are some of the, uh, so as we, you know, talk about it, is the, you know, we, we've obviously talked about these transition years and they are important. So what are some of the key topics and issues that impact students' mathematics experience through these transition years? Well, um, one, when you think about it, is student readiness for when they enter high school, readiness for the courses that they can take that will go from ninth grade all the way up to 12th grade. So coming in with a strong algebra foundation, when I say a strong algebra foundation, I don't necessarily say in that they have to have taken and completed what's considered a high school algebra one course, but having a strong foundation so that when they take it, they're successful, be it in eighth grade, be it in ninth grade, um, and then they're able to keep on going and taking rich math courses. Um, understanding of more those who support students, those who um, counsel students in course taking, of where they need to keep opportunities open for them. So having a student take the next math class or and I say take the next math class because that's what happened with me. Calculus right, right. was in my pathway. It was the next class there you go. for my children. It was the next math class mm -hmm. for them to take. So they took it. I didn't, I really didn't give them an opt out setting, but um, what we need is pathways that are so rich. And that's the part of um, the development of pathways that are so rich that have modernized. You mentioned discrete math. I mentioned data science, more statistics. There's a, a variety of topics that can be embedded in, course pathways and course sequences in a modular way or as a whole course when you talk about from 11th grade up to 12th grade. And so how do we make sure that the foundations for students so that when they get to 11th grade, they have multiple options and they're not closed off because of what experiences in math they had from pre-K all the way up through about ninth or grade. Yeah. Well, and I know too, like there's been... And again, I'm going back to my own experience, but just it's what I can speak to, like the options of, you know, mathematics courses. And I remember there was a statistics course. And I think I mentioned this when we were talking about this, like that I wanted to take. And, the you know, you had to go into the lunchroom to have the person sign off on your course list. And I wanted to take statistics, you know, like I was, I like statistics, you know, sports center was in its heyday. And I'm like thinking about it and like advancing my understanding and like my teachers, you know, the head department chair said, no, 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 that's not, that's not a course for you. That's just people trying to get their credit. And so we're also saying too, like, like having these courses and experience, but they're rich core that are going to deepen their understanding of mathematics and not just, we're going to check a box and get people, you know, their credits. Right. And same thing at the secondary world where it's, we're not just going to, you know, take care of a, a math requirement, but what can we actually do that's meaningful? That's actually going to develop relationships with mathematics. Right. And, and Bill, that's part of the work. Part of the work is not only helping math educators um, have a, a stronger understanding of the courses, the experiences that would be in courses. So that's the business course being a rich course that is not a dead end course right. and not a low level course. Um, when you think about the math educators, you also have our general educators. And that's sometimes our counselors, that's other educators in our yep. building, that's other educators that might interact with students on any capacity and helping them understand also that the calculus course is not the only course that students should be engaged with. We need to make sure that students have a richer experience. So maybe if I am taking calculus, but I've never taken anything with statistics as a, a, a nice statistical module to really help me understand some of the foundational pieces. And I'm not talking about what you get in middle school because that builds right. into it. But mm -hmm. when you get to a point where you need to use your statistical tools that you have accumulated across the years, how do we give students space and time and opportunity? You mentioned Sports Center. How do I give you an opportunity to do some of this statistical work in your school setting, in your local community setting, to really help with interpreting data, using data, gathering data, 
and understanding data that's right. that's there and available. Yeah. And like you know, just going just we're gonna ride the sports center thing just for a second. Cause if I would have had a better understanding of statistics and probability during the uh Sammy Sosa Mark McGuire home run, you know, slug fest that was happening, maybe in probability wise be like, you know what? This, these home runs are nice, but this does seem a little odd that like how there's so many guys hitting over 50 home runs and I've never seen that in my life before. Eh, maybe there's something going on here. You know? mm-hmm. This is an anomaly, you know? Yeah. yeah. You so, know, what's the probability? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, you know, we talk about the transition years and, and, you know, kind of talk about what it is, but wh- maybe what's the biggest misconception around the transition years? Um. I think one of them is this regards to, and I I won't know if it's a misconception or if it's just something, an issue that we have to deal with and we have to work with, is that when you create alternate pathways, and there have always been alternate pathways, everybody going through school didn't always go take calculus. There was a calculus pathway, and then in some cases, there was a other pathway. And it might have been multiple other pathways, but the, the part of what we need to really um, push in on is making sure that those other pathways aren't um, divergent in such a way that it takes a kid in a in a way where it's a dead end for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's one of the big things we got to make sure, but that we build up these pathways so that they're sort of parallel structures so that if I hadn't taken calculus in high school, but I was still engaged in good math courses Mm-hmm. I can still go into college and go in and, as a freshman and possibly take my calculus course. Say I want to be an engineer or a science major and I needed calculus. I can take my calculus as a freshman right. in, in college. But I didn't lose much in my senior year or my junior year because I didn't step so far away from some of the skill set that I need to keep with me right. when I get into a calculus level class. So how do we really design pathways and there's some models out there but how do we really design pathways and help people better understand what's out there what's available what um is some of the work that's being done so that we can learn from models where they're doing the work and pushing in on this work to design courses and course pathways to help students have um alternates have students who don't go into a calculus course have a good experience and not just a good experience, but have a rich enough experience that it keeps them ready for their next. Yeah. And I think too, you know, like you're talking about ultimate pathways and I was, and I was thinking about this question too, is probably the, you know, pushing against, and I don't know, if, not again, not a misconception, maybe a clarity, but like getting, you know, the, the parents or the other, you know, the people that are advising uh, students on what courses to take that, Hey, you know, in my back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, that path, that ultimate path worked for me. And that's what I'm going to keep recommending versus saying like, you know what, that did work for me, but this, there's another path that could, that could be just as good. Right. And to make sure that people are open to those things and designing them in a way that they are, again, like you said, beneficial and, and leading to uh, rich mathematical experiences. And so think about the mathematical experiences. How do we help build some of the mathematical experiences so that they can better connect to our students experiences our students futures um which math courses do you think about when you think about math courses that really connect to possible future career learning experiences that they might go through training experiences and how is that how is that part navigated for 10th 11th 12th graders when you talk about math it's one thing to say oh here's an example of an engineer Mm mm-hmm and here's the, the math that the engineer needed or used. But what are the, some of the other careers where we can help enlighten some of those experiences and just go back to the one of statistics and sports center and all those kind of pieces? There's opportunities there to help people understand the use of statistics and how it translates into a career, analyzing data, um, and big, rich opportunities to analyze some, some data and not just analyze data, but to use data in your career so yeah yeah why not i mean just you and i in the education field i mean <laughs> i get email after email about like hey there's big data sets if somebody wants to take a look at these and, and make sense of them and like it see what you know what can be told through them and so every field i'm sure has that too and so and that's just again one example of many that uh could lead us to somewhere 
Um, so let's talk about this uh, this initiative uh, that we're talking about, the Launch Years Initiative and, and the group that you're facilitating. Tell me a little bit about w- what's happening. Well, but this, the, the part that I'm facilitating is the Launch Years Mass Mass Organization Leadership Network, which really we started some of this work initially back in November, but a lot of it has been kicked off in March with a series of meetings, a series of work sessions. Um, and that group was brought together to really um, help organizations, the leadership of organizations, help their members gain a big understanding around the work that we can do to push them and support um, changes, advocate for changes, um, course development, which is, you know, the pathways are made up of courses and everything along those lines. Um, with threefold, we, we've done a lot of work around outreach. So learning about some of the work that's been done because the, the launches initiative through the Dana Center has been um, in place for a couple of years. And so they've been doing some work with some state. Um, and so learning about that work, showing some models of courses, some new courses, some modernized courses, um, but also, and that's helping with the pathways, learning about outreach. You know, how do we help communicate the message? How do we help um, talk about adjustments that need to be made? How do we help as math educators or those in the math organizations that are represented, help our members be able to talk with their colleagues about as easy as what you said, counseling. No, somebody told you don't take calculus. I mean, don't take statistics. Let's go take calculus. Well, how do we help them understand that? What options do you want to provide a student with? And it shouldn't, of course, it should be of such a nature that it shouldn't be such a detriment when you say don't take one over the other. We should be like, wow, how's there to figure out how to get you some of both and what's that look like? And then the other part is um, having these conversations. And so what we've had over the course of about five meetings um, five work sessions is conversations around key issues that come up. And we're talking about everything through making sure that as we, as, as organizations, state school systems design pathways, that they're mindful of tracking, that they're mindful of what happens when sometimes what you see is certain kids being filtered into certain courses mm-hmm. um, and filter out of certain courses. So being mindful of that. Being mindful that this work of the transition years does not just start when they get through 11th grade. Right. And so what has been happening for students from pre-K to 12, from pre-K to 10, let's say, is so key and so important to setting them up for this transition into from 11th grade into post-secondary. So really um, pushing in and thinking around that work has been the bulk of it. Um, if you were to look at the Launch Years Initiative on the Dana Center, you would see some of the work that's been done in the last two years around that, some of the recommendations that are out there to help support the work, and some examples and models of some of the work that has been done to help gain a broader understanding of the work around the transition year. Yeah, I mean, there's a, you point to that, and we'll, we'll have a link to that uh, website because there's a lot of resources. There's the Launch Years Report that's, you know, lots of good stuff there. So, I mean, people looking for when, like with anything, like when you start something like this, you're like, well, what has been done before? And, and I like that. That's exactly where you started. Like, Hey, we're, what's already been happening. And now let's go from there. And how do we keep moving forward with it? So what what's on the schedule going forward? So that this is kind of a, a kickoff uh, to some programming that's going to be happening. So what's on the schedule for supporting work around uh, this initiative, around the transition, around the launch years? Well, and that's where I want to thank you, Joel, for this opportunity, because what we're kicking off, this is the first of basically, I guess, let's call it five engagements. Yeah. Um, we're starting with a podcast and we're going to end with a podcast. But in between, as we really call, let's talk about the transition years as we go across the next couple of months. September and October and November, we're going to be doing doing webinars. So we'll have three webinars. Um, the webinars are are all being presented and shared by um, presenters who are going to be coming from these eleven organizations. Um, so they're in the midst of putting the presentations together, so that what we can do is have question and answer, so presentation and some Q and A pieces where we look at. Um, some key pieces. So for example, the first webinar in September will be a look at mathematics pre-K 
through 12 and post-secondary and really having some conversations around that. In October, we'll turn back around and say, hmm, let's talk about these transition years and why this work is important for our students. That's our second webinar. And then our third webinar really looks at content that matters for transition courses, um, meaningful content for model courses. And so that's the part of really thinking about how do we go about designing courses and looking at some models that are out there so that if I take pathway one or pathway two or whatever way I go, I'm still going to be set up for where when I go into college. Still going to have that opportunity if I need to go take calculus in college to take calculus in college if I didn't take it in high school. And so those are the, the three webinars that are sort of sitting there and then we'll be back together um, later on in, I think it's November. Yes. And some organizational members will be here with us. And basically they're going to talk about the support that's needed to help make this, this work around the transition years continue to come to fruition, um, continue to push in, continue to change the narrative, um, where they'll be providing in each webinar is designed to provide suggestions for working with members of the mathematics education community, working with the general education community, and working with families and community stakeholders. So we want to help people with understanding, but we also want to help people with, and so it's really what will come from these webinars is like a call to action. Here's some actions that you can do to move the needle, to push the work, to make change, to be a change agent. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, like the list of organizations. I mean, uh, I'd have to ask what some of the uh, acronyms are, but I mean, the list of some, mostly organizations that I know of. I mean, like if I think of every meaningful math organization that I'm familiar, with, like they're all on this list. And so the um, what's that's what's kind of amazing the collaboration that you have through this mathematics organizations leadership network uh, that you've come uh you know assembled around the launch year it's kind of like a an avenger sort of thing so you, you've got a nice assembly going on but then also thinking too the webinars that you've laid out i mean i got excited because that's exactly how i think about teaching is i think about what what are we teaching what, what's the content who are we teaching there's a second webinar and then how are we going to facilitate this relationship between those two and so specifically in this area of the launch year, those launch years or the transition years. And so, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited about the, the content. I'm excited about hearing what the people are that you're going to assemble for those webinars. And then we get a chance to come back and kind of say like, okay, well, here's a vision. How are we going to move forward with it? And so that's, that's... I'm excited about that too. So not that I'm in a rush to get to us coming back together for the podcast, but I'm looking forward to the next couple of months as this work balls this work um comes out and the webinars are there and the people participate in the question and answer i think what we need to have is the more dialogue we can have around this work the more we can help change many of us know the mathematics that we went through in high school and for some of us it was a good experience a great experience but we also know we have friends colleagues peers um relatives that did not go through the same math experience we went through or we would want them to go through something different than what right. we went through so how do we really start to roll up our sleeves collectively to get at this? So looking forward to this, um, really looking forward to this fall. And I know by the time we come back together in November, I'm going to be tired, but it's all about good work. Yeah, yeah. Well, and two, these are free and open to anyone who wants to attend. Um, yes, so sir. all the links, again, will wherever you get this podcast, will be links there, but there'll also be a link, uh, we'll, we'll say the link, uh, I think I'm going to call it amazonplanet.com forward slash uh, transition years. And so we'll post, we'll say that at the end of the podcast episode too. But again, all of it's free. So anyone that's interested in this and it's not just going to be, you know, up for a little bit and then pulled down, these these resources will be there. So, which is kind of amazing. Uh, again, all the different organizations that are together. So you're getting people that really think deeply about uh, that are real cool with mathematics thinking about this, these issues and how can we best move forward on them? So that's, that's pretty exciting. So what do you hope occurs, John? Like well, going forward, really like what, what's the outcome? It's, it's a call to action, Joel. It's, it's time for us to release. And, and not that people haven't been doing work. That's the part to remember that there have been states, there have been school districts, school systems that have been pushing in on this work universities that have been um, two year and four year that have been partnering with school systems to help make this transition pathway 
um, more beneficial for students because you see students who have to take remedial math courses coming into the two-year to four-year setting, you see some changes and some shifts of that happening in, in spaces all around the country. Um, but the real, the, the call to action is let's continue this work. The call to action is, okay, here's some other places where we can push in. The call to action is helping broadening people's understanding around what opportunities are available as students go from 10th grade into the 11th and 12th grade and how those opportunities keep them in the game of being prepared for their future. And the more information you know about that and how they help prepare students for where they want to go, um, the more you can give good counsel, the more you can give good guidance in some cases, make good strong recommendations for a student. So this is really, um, this series is about a, um, an awareness, but a call to action agenda with it to say, okay, let's pick this up. Let's learn from others out there who are doing the work. Let's learn from some states that are doing this work, some um, educational institutions that are pushing in on this work. Let's learn from them and let's go. Let's more of yeah, us yeah. need to roll up our sleeves and get to work on it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, one of the mantras that we like to use around here and uh, is that we're smarter together. And like having that sort of access to the knowledge and expertise that you're assembling is, is pretty great. But then also thinking like, if I get excited listening to this and thinking about, I want to do some things, I'm responding to the call to action. You're not on your own. Or if you're experiencing some of these issues that within your institution or uh, with just in your own experience, you're not on your own. And like those sorts of things is that's, what's kind of exciting is like, I want to design better courses. Well, we've got the webinar, but we also are connected with people that they're already doing it and they're already seeing some success with it. And you can tap into the, some of that expertise, which is, which is pretty amazing. So yeah, I'm excited. And when you talk about expertise, I, well, I'm going I'm to put a teaser out there. You got to come to a webinar to see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there are some, some states that have built some open source resources Ooh. around courses, course modules that are like, wow, I wish I can go take that course. <laughs> I wish I can take that module. So courses that are designed around several modules um, mm -hmm. with options and alternatives for ones you can pick. So if I know I need to be ready because I've got a strong, I want to pick out this when I go into college, but I'm not taking the modules, I can take that module in a position. So I take maybe two or three modules a year, maybe one a quarter. It depends on the design, but I can position myself to have that module right when I need it as I think through the design. And so um, you got to come check out that webinar series. That will be the one that's in November that's really going to talk about some examples, some models, um, and what we can learn about some of those models that are out there. You also can see some on the, the, the Launch Year's Initiative website, some um, samples there too. Awesome. And so just read, we got the this podcast and then it is dropping in August. Then we have, we're going to talk about a, a look at math pre-K pre-k through 12 and, and post-secondary we're doing that that's a webinar and again links will be in the show notes for that uh, but that's happening in september then we have the transition years why the work is important for our students that's happening in october and then uh, that's another webinar and then content that matters for transition courses meaningful content for model courses that's another webinar happening in november and then we're going to end november with our other bookend podcast where we're going to talk about supporting the work that's that's pretty exciting so yeah we're we're going to get some leaders from uh some of the some outstanding organizations to come talk with the two of us and that'll be there we'll check back again in november but um but yeah so that's about it for this episode so any, any final words john before we sign off um the thing i would say is is get into the conversation right um if if i, I don't know what you know about the transition years, what you know about pathways and things along those lines. We get into the conversation, learn more about the work that's happening, learn more about what needs to be done to help change and make the mathematics experiences for our students as they go from 10th grade, so 11th and 12th grade, into post-secondary, no matter where they want to go, career, job training, um, military, two-year, four-year, Whatever they experience, they want some kind of apprenticeship right. that we understand. How do we help better position them, especially with rich, relevant math experiences in their last two years so that they will be prepared and stay on course, being able to be successful when they get to the post-secondary side. So just, just check us out on the webinar series. Come learn, come listen, 
engage us. And like Joel was saying, there's others out there pushing in on this work. If you feel like you're alone, let's get you connected to someone so that you can have somebody, a thought partner, a thought group, yes. um, a thought leadership network organization to help you, not organization, but mass leaders organization network, a network to help you think about it. Because a lot of the major your major mass ed organizations are, are pushing in on this work and sharing it. We'll be sharing this work with their members. Fantastic. All right. So thank you very much, John. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And remember on the, again, like we said before, in the next episode of the transition years, we will be talking about supporting the work with leaders in mathematics and mathematics education, about how to support math educators in this work around the transition years. Wherever you found this podcast, there'll be a link to the show notes that will contain all the reference information this episode, and especially, especially the link to those webinars that are happening in September, October, and November. Otherwise, if you can't find it there, you can always head to amadonplanet.com forward slash transition years, and I'll direct you to all the, the various information. And then, so again, thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the transition years. We hope that what you heard has led you to be informed, inspired, and empowered to improve mathematics experiences outcomes for all students related to the transition years. <laughs>